welcome back to the news today. This is One on One. We often speak in depth on this show about the chaotic reality in the Middle East, about conflict, and the many attempts at solutions. But the work of our guest tonight gives a slightly different view on the Middle East through sports and karate in particular. Joining me is Ayal Nir, Vice President of the World Traditional Karate Federation, who works in partnership with Jordan. Thanks very much for Hello. being with me. So I want to begin with Jordan. It's appropriate that on the same day that Israel and Jordan are signing a major water deal, Jordan, uh, a de delegation is arriving in Israel also for the work that you do together. Tell me how you came to this partnership. They're neighbors, we have peace, but it could be better. Everybody realizes. And we have a s unique way of trying to promote relations between our two countries through, as you indicated, through the martial arts or traditional karate. Specifically, I have been working with my friend, Sensei Imad Halil of Jordan, arriving today to Israel. And he had, he's heading the Federation on Jordan's side, me on Israel's side, and jointly we have some unique initiatives for you know, working and doing things and establishing a new center uh, in the Middle East to get the people, you know, not the governments, but the people right. to work and train and hopefully, you know, do create a new reality. So that's what's interesting about this on the personal level, because as you said, there has been for a long time peace between Israel and Jordan, but what's on paper in terms of between the people and the actual friendliness is maybe uh, far from what it should be. How does that cooperation actually work? What, what obstacles did you run into? getting this together between Israel and Jordan? There's always logistics. I mean, you need to cross the border and visa, blah, blah, but um, when there is, you know, good intention, some vision, and when we train, you know, we get, we call this dojo, or a place of training, you know, it, it's, it's becoming me, it's, it's like irrelevant where you're from. You know, we train, we do mental, physical, and we're people. So like today, we start a three-day seminar in the city of Netanya, and then we have an international in tournament. Northern Israel, more or less. Uh, or more or less. Middle by mid the sea, North. By the sea. And the big thing, and it's almost a dream, a vision. So it's very initial, but you know, it's a big. We are going, God willing, to establish an international, set, I mean, Buddha martial art center on the border between Israel and Jordan that would serve the entire re region, I would say. Do you find that people came to this when you have? Um, when you have people coming to actually take part in martial arts and karate to compete or just to take part in the program, do you find they come with preconceived notions of the other? I, my experience, uh, as I said before, when you go down to actual training, like I tell you, share my, my personal thing. I've been training for many years with a great master, Nishiyama Sensei, it's like a legend, right? In Los Angeles, the USA. And it's because he's so famous and worldwide, you know, it's like number one. So many, many people used to come from whatever, you know, uh, England, you, uh, Japan, Iraq. And, and I mean, I remember the people. Really so, all over the yeah. place. And, oh, I'm this, uh, so my religion, my language of choice. But, but when we, you know, train together and we face one another, it's it becoming... It disappears. It disappears. It's, it's irrelevant. It's interesting because you say this, and this is, looks like the picture of how sports should be. This is the ideal. This exactly. is the notion. But yeah. there are many cases where, if we're speaking about Israel, for example, where you have Israeli athletes, a lot of controversy over different sporting events, banned from different sporting events in places like Qatar and so on. How do you, how do you view that? Because it seems the line between politics and sports is not always so clear. But, but you're talking organization-wise. And then you have all those conflicts and cons irrelevant, but as a people, you know, it's me and Mr. Imad Khalil. Um, I mean, I forget about I'm from Israel, he's from Jordan. It's like, um, it, it's, it doesn't, it's, it's irrelevant, as I said before. And that's the idea, as, as I said before, you know, we, we have some uh, Japanese people involved in this great initiative I mentioned before. And two, two days ago, we went with a Japanese architect to the site, proposed site, on the river, on the border between Israel and Jordan, he will, and he was, wow, this is amazing, you know, we we're going to do this, this, this. And he was like already, you know, visualizing how it's going to look like. And our vision is to have all those people, not just Jordan, through Jordan. We want to have all those, uh, you know, Gulf countries like Dubai and I don't know the names. United <laughs> you know? Arab Emirates. Right, maybe. right. So, I mean, we hope it's going to be open for 
everyone, regardless of you know what, where you're from. What kind of obstacles, when you're talking about actually building something, creating a center that sounds incredible between Jordan and Israel on the border, which, as we know, is on one of the many tense locations around in, in this neighborhood, what stands in front of you to make that happen? Money, is it the government? The, money, the Israeli that's government? obvious. You know, we of need, course, but money. again, we, we, we are not naive. I mean, we are visionaries, I hope, we try. But then we are very realistic, okay? So we know we need to get the support of major relevant organization budget. It's, it's going to take a few years. It's not, you know, a two months project. So reali we realize that, and that's why we start working with people, organizations, governments, Israel, Jordan, Japan, others. And we have this, like, task team, like, you know, A team, already working. It's very initial, but it's already in process. But it has to start somewhere. And God will, and you, please interview me a year from now. And, and we'll uh, see where the, yeah, we'll where see the where center is at. Yeah. What do you think, that the way you describe sports and people, the, these sort of all of these notions and the politics falling away, is quite ideal for, for this region, for the Middle East. Is there something you think that the average, the, the society in general, if we're talking about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which is, of course, a very big subject to get into, but something that can be taken, something that can be learned practically, from what you're doing in sports? Mm. I think it, it, whatever you do, it should be an ongoing process, not a one-time thing, because we do have, and we and others, you know, you do like a gathering, a meeting, a one-time training. Okay, you come train very nice, but then each one goes back to his own environment and, you know, way of thinking. So it needs to be like something that goes on, there's a continuation, and then you can build something and change and, and, and get to trust the other side of people. So whatever we do, we, we, we try to make sure it's a long-lasting thing and not a one-time thing. Right. That's, that's critical, I think. Can you imagine sports, if, if something like what you're doing, if you were to open sort of chains, let's call them, or if you were to sort of export this idea to a few places in the region, do you think that actually has the power to, to affect change? Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, um, it's, it's not funny, it's, it's nice. Uh, last year, a few months back, we had the World Championship in Geneva, right? And we sent a uh, like, big team, like 60, 60 people, Jewish, Arab, kids, youth, adults, to perform in the city of Bern, in Geneva, and it was very nice. The people, the local, I mean, the people came from the World uh, Cup. They saw our initiative, Middle East, and then from their own initiative, we didn't say anything, the people from Russia, in Ukraine. They said, oh, really? we want to do the same. Those and, are two people, and two countries that could really use this. And they were there for the World Cup. And spontaneously, they made up some you know, uh, p demonstration performance, and they performed. After we came, Jewish Arab, and they said, okay, next one, Russia and Ukraine. So it's like you, know, so it does, you give uh, the direction, a ripple and effect. people get that. So uh, tell me a little bit about, personally, how, how you ended up here. Wow, okay, long story made short. Um, uh, I've been training many years, um, as I said, with Nishiyama Sensei. He's like a legend. What drew you to, to karate, man, in the first place? Of I all, I want, of all I wanna, the sports. I wanna, I wanna, no, sorry. You just wanted to fight. I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I mean, people look for this um, like, nice story, but a friend of mine said, you should try, 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 try. I said, karate, fighting? No, oh, well, I'm not a fighter. Okay. I tried, and then, you know, it's been many, many years back. Today, and, and for me, you know, it's like, you know, everything coming. Uh, I serve as vice president of the International Federation. Of course, I'm from Israel. I'm proud of it. But, as, you know, from my position, vice president, I have the opportunity to promote global initiative, taking the treasure of knowledge of Budo, martial arts, and le use that, leverage that for really important um, project, initiative beyond the self-defense context, right, such as promoting peace, education with UNESCO and I really feel you know I'm trying to be you know modest and but we we can make a difference we can change through the Japanese culture change things in our region and beyond well from what you're saying what you're already doing it sounds like you are making a change and sometimes it can seem in this region where everything is very cynical and a lot of times our conversations end up cynical this kind of thing is it's real and uh, so what you're doing is is a wonderful thing and I hope it's exported uh, more and good luck with this, with your current tournament. Eyal Neil, thanks very much for being with me. Thank you. And that's it for us for tonight and for this week. Join us back next week, next Sunday evening, for another edition of the News Today.